Hello and welcome to a very special presentation, a cultural program by Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center, Danakanaga, and Tanana Cheese Conference. I'm Sharon McConnell. Tonight's presentation is March in Our Memories, Spring Carnivals and Dog Racing. With the warmer temperatures upon us now and more sunshine, many of our villages have in the past and are currently uh, getting ready to hold spring carnivals and also dog races. Very popular in the interior part of Alaska. We have two very special guests with us tonight to talk about this. There are esteemed elders, Marie Yaska, originally of Huslia, and also Andy Jimmy, originally of Minto. And welcome and thank you for being with us tonight and talking about this. Um, we also just want to say before we start that this cultural program is a collaboration between the organizations TCC um, Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center and in Okanaga. And we also want to thank our major sponsor, Doyon Limited, for supporting this type of programming. And we really appreciate it. And along the evening, if you do enjoy this, um, there's always ways to look at the programs that have been recorded at Morris Thompson. Uh, website and also if you want to feel compelled to contribute so we can continue to make these programs there's also a link on the Morris Thompson website for uh, donations. So tonight we are going to talk about spring carnivals and dog racing and as I mentioned we have two esteemed elders with us Andy Jimmy and Marie Yaska and before we start maybe if you could uh, tell the folks where you're from and um, and uh, your experience of having spring carnivals. Andy? My name is Andrew Jimmy, Minto. Mm. I'm living in Fairbanks now for the winter. We go back in the summertime, go back to Minto. Okay. And Marie, what about you? Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm originally from Huslia. But I moved there and to Fairbanks in 1976. Um, I worked at Chief Andrew Isaac for 28 years. And now I'm retired. Uh, and one of our esteemed elders. <laughs> so uh, the reason we asked you to to talk with us about these two topics is, is because you're very familiar you both raced dogs before and you both were involved with spring carnivals in your villages um, maybe we could talk a little bit about spring carnivals first Andy could you tell us about traditionally why were carnivals held in the village dog racing was one of the greatest events in the villages everybody raced they even they didn't have uh, racing dogs. It's all working dogs, but they all race. And in Minto, our big day was when everybody get done beaver trapping in February, and they moved back to the village. March 17th was a big, big day. They have dog races, the women's dog races, the little kids race, and the men's. Usually three, four days of events, they have uh, pretty long races them days for the village, maybe 20 miles, 25 miles. The women race. 15 to 20 miles. Then the kids, kids race is right in front of the village where everybody can watch them. All the races was on the river and we have pot latches just about every night. Dance till 5 a.m. And this guitar and fiddle music. Them days, a long time ago, nobody's seen, but this was all fiddle music. And uh, 
Like I say, the dog races was the main event. We have snowshoe races and other kind of races for the uh, kids. The snowshoe race was pretty com competitive. Like, uh, I went to the the river is about a mile and a half wide, and they race all the way across and back. So that's about three miles. They race around the sandbar, and uh, they have wrestling at night for the kids, and just different kind of events all weekend. Usually start Thursday and end end up Sunday night. Uh, that was the main, main event. But you move back to Christmas, oh yeah, I suppose. Christmas time we have women's race. It's usually about 15 miles. And then New Year's is a uh, men's race. So every chance we get, every chance we get together, there's all some kind of dog races and get the people together. In the olden days, were the dogs that were used in the dog races, were those the working dogs for the families? They were all working dogs. There was no, 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 and small teams, they have five to, if you have seven dogs, Eight dogs is a pretty big team a long time ago because it was hard to get uh, enough fish to last all winter. So they try to, and they go trapping with these dogs. They uh, go, like my dad, you know, go 30 miles out and stay out there a few. And well, a lot of times they move their whole family out there and use, use our dogs for trapping. And then when they're in the village or even in camp, they use the dogs to haul wood. They haul wood like Minto, you gotta go quite a ways, uh, three, four miles, five miles to get a load of wood. So your dogs are working just about every day. And <clears throat> that's kind of dogs they use for racing the same dogs. Mm -hmm. You couldn't afford to keep two different teams. Mm -hmm. So Marie, he talked about some of the activities that were held in Minto at Spring Carnival. Were those similar to what you had in, in uh, Huslia? Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about some of your activities that were taking yeah. place? They had uh, men's dog race, women's dog race, kids' dog race, snowshoe races. Uh, the snowshoe races were men, and I don't remember kids getting in snowshoe race. Maybe they did, but I forgot. But it was mostly uh, men, and we watched them from the river. They go up to the slough and back, that's five miles. Uh, and the women, they just... Uh, Oh, in front of the village, uh, race snowshoe race in front of the village. Mm -hmm. Were some of the the um, events, uh, some of the games that were at the carnival, were they kind of like test of endurance for people? I think so, especially the snowshoe race. Uh, yeah. And you both were very involved with dog racing. Could you tell us about your your days of dog racing, Marie? What was it like? The one I really remember and get a kick out of is when my cousin, late Bergman Sam, uh, he told me, you're gonna race with my dogs. I said, okay. Here he hooked up 12 dogs for me. Gee, it was fright, no snow on the river. There was uh, no snow that year, very little snow. 
when we came out of the slough and got on the river, it's just ice, just little drift here and there. When that, uh, when the sled hit that uh, drift, we tip over and drag. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> I think I drag most of the races. <laughs> How many years did you dog race, Murray? Well. We used to do this every year, and then the snow machines came in the 60s. After the snow machines came, everybody got rid of their dogs. So that was the end of our dog races. Uh, but they still had snowshoe race and snow machine race. and. But the other villages, they still had their dogs. We used to go to different villages to uh, for their spring carnivals. Did mm. you have a favorite dog? Uh, my, I, I had a pit dog. Uh, he was a big. Uh, I got it from my late brother George, as a puppy. And he got really big. Gee, he just barked really. He sounded like he'll tear you up. And uh, I took him out when I was walking one day. His name was Blackie. I said, Blackie, you're going to be my guard today. You come with me. So he's coming along with me, and we're just going in the portage, and he just went in little ways, and he came he was going to run home, and here there was cow and calf in the portage. I said, hey, Blackie, you come back here. You're supposed to protect me. That's why I took you. You come back here, and you chase that moose away. He come back, and he just went little ways from me, and he's <laughs> and he turned around again, <laughs> <laughs> went running home. <laughs> Not a good guard dog, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't a good guard dog. Uh, right. What about you, Andy? How long did you dog race for? Oh, about half of my life, probably. We, <clears throat> we didn't spend too much time having kids race. We had to, uh, they tell us, if you want to have uh, dog race for the kids, you have to break your own trail. So a bunch of us boys would get together and break break trail about a week before the race. And we go around a little island up in front of the village. And uh, that's how we had our races. Because the men were just busy working on their trails. So. And we have kids race every we kind of manage our own race. We get together and say, we'll break trail tomorrow or day after. And we we even haul wood for the elders and make little money to... We kind of took care of our own race and mental, old mental. And when we went to new mental, they just... They didn't have too many. When my boy was growing up, they used to race all the time. And he had his own team. And he was, I don't know, nine, ten years old, eight, nine, ten years old. And it's a good practice. They get a lot of, learn how to take care of dogs. And I was always out working, so he had to take, take care of his own dogs. His mom helped him, and so, and that's why it was an old village too. We, if we want to have race, we have to put it up or mostly break the trail ourselves. What are some of your fondest memories of dog racing? Well, we had a dog that wasn't too much of a racing dog, but. I got him from an elder. He's out there 
carving on his paddle or stick spoon or whatever all the time. I go right by his house and visit him only on the way to school, on the way back. He asked me if I want a pup. I tell him, yeah, and we got, got him. And it's a pretty smart dog. It's, uh, like the race, if I fall off the sled, he would stop wait for me and that's my favorite dog we kept him till he was about 17 years old and he was a family dog and he got my grandma and grandpa used to stay out at what we call cash it's about 12 miles from old old Minto summertime he used to go visit them all by himself and dog was almost human <laughs> and he was really when he died everybody cried the whole family it's a family dog <clears throat> and uh, I guess my I left Minto when I was uh, 14 years old. Didn't race too much before then, but when I came back from boarding school, I 16, I didn't race for a couple of years and didn't even think about racing. All I wanted to do was trap. And my dog, my dad had a pretty good team, so and I had this one dog was coming in from Fairbanks to Indiana, was driving up to play basketball and some racing people from Fairbanks was in Minto. And I got ahead, was breaking the trail, I had this big leader and this one guy wanted to buy him to race in the North American. And I tell him, no, he's not for sale. So he said, oh, I thought about it. And he said, why don't you come up, race my dogs, and bring your leader with me. So I race. Didn't train. It's about a week before the race, came to Fairbanks. Well, we had a, they had a 16-mile preliminary race. I just seen in the paper a couple of years ago and brought a smile to my face. I was, it was a newspaper 50 years ago or whatever, how long ago it was. I think it was 1954, 16-mile race. And they announced the three winners. It was in the newspaper. Horace Smoke was first. Andrew Cochran was second. Andy Jimmy was third. <laughs> it was quite a deal. Two well-known mushers and a kid that didn't know anything. <laughs> so I, I, I kept that little clip in and it was quite a deal because to have my name mentioned with two great dog mushers like Andy Cochran and Horace Smoke was something I would think about that. That was a, a good race. Anyway, I raced in the North American that year with Warren Brewer's team and with my leader and came in fourth. There was about 30 teams in there. They always used to have a lot of, a lot of uh, mushers coming from all over. Uh, in the early 50s, then I got drafted in the Army and then raced for a few years. And when I came back, I raced for, I used to race for people. I didn't have my own. I always had one or two dogs and and a team, but I raced for Mac McLean, well-known dog. He never, he had dog owner. He never raced his 
own dogs, but um, I went to Anchorage and came in seventh, I think, was in the money anyway, and then seventh in North American. It was a pretty good year. And then uh, I raced for Gigolotti for one year and won all the preliminary races and my dogs got sick so we didn't finish the race. So this, that's, uh, I raced North American five times and uh, four round of year three times. And it was good times. It was, you meet a lot of good people and talk dogs all night. And <laughs> Marie, what about you? Did, um, Did you race outside of the village yourself? or Not, not outside of the village, no. Uh -huh. But Did I used to get in snowshoe races in other villages. Yeah. Uh, when we used to go to other villages. One year we formed the Dog Mushers Association. <coughs> we had bingo all winter, once a week. By uh, springtime, it went up to, the jackpot went up to 300. Gee, everybody went to bingo. And while we were playing bingo, we heard plane land. Pretty soon the pilot come in. There was one cart left. And somebody told him, hey, there's a one cart left, $300 jackpot. So he got that card, and he won that 300 <laughs> <laughs> that card that nobody wanted. <laughs> did, did you train dogs to get ready for the races? No. And no? Mm. Our dogs were used for working. Mm. And I never really ran dogs myself. Uh, too busy raising kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, you both mentioned that um, in the in the good old days, if you will, that there used to be a lot of dog mushers uh, participating in the races. And do you see that same number these days now, or or not? No, I think. Uh, there could be a lot more people involved, but it got too technical, I think, that uh, people from, you know, vets, they know about dogs, they, they, they feed them different and do this and do that, and us people from the village, we don't have that opportunity. We don't have the... Uh, all of the, the way they take care of the dogs. And we take care of them good, we feed them good, train them good, but they have different kind of feed that they use and a lot of us couldn't afford it, you know. And uh, thinking back, the old days and old Minto, I think our best event was the women's race. Uh, like, he said that they they never train the dogs. They don't. The men haul wood and they go trapping. They're using the dogs all the time. The women never, never. Like my wife was telling me one time, she got the race. Her brother just tell her get her get on the sled, and away she went. That's the way it was. It mm. was not not a real planned thing. Some of them, you know, would run dogs day before the race or run dog once anyway, but some don't know even, they don't even run the dogs and all of a sudden they're in a 10 mile race. You know. So that was a good event, I thought. It was a lot of fun and a lot of screaming. And <laughs> 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 so do you still, um have carnivals in your villages? Yeah, it's not like it used to be though. They just they have different kind of events, but uh, they move. 
I think the, about the first week in April, we didn't have it last year, of course, uh, the virus, and uh, so every year we have women's race on Friday, the first week in April, and two days men's race. And they have kids' events. They have kids. One dog race and snowshoe race and different kind of events. We still do it, but not. It used to be a whole mental four or five day event. You know. mm -hmm. What about in Hooslia, Marie? Do you get to go back to the spring carnival? No, I don't. But uh, they have their. Uh, Carnival and during uh, Christmas holidays, and it's mostly mostly for kids. Uh, and then later on, they have uh, old men's race, and uh, yeah, they still have. It's coming back really in Huslia. Uh, when my late brother moved back, he restarted the uh, dog mushing. Mm. So people are starting to raise dogs again. Uh. I, uh, I was wondering, because I think it was you, Andy, that mentioned about certain dogs, you know, that, um, that people raise just to race, you know, the kennels. You always hear about kennels with special dogs and racing the Iditarod or the North American. Um, and you see a lot of that today, but back then, how did you pick out good dog racing um, dogs or puppies? What did you look for? What was the question? What do you look for in a puppy? You know, you always hear about people picking out, you know, real good dogs to race, but what what did you look for back then? Well... There's, everybody got their own theories. Everybody different. The old days, my grandmother days, they pick up a pup on his hind leg, hold him up, and if he just lay there, just don't try to get away, he's no good. But if he lift his head up, they keep him, they put him over here. That's a keeper. Really? But if they don't move around or just lay there, too lazy to throw them on the other pile. <laughs> oh, my. So that's how my grandmother, you know, taught me how to. And that seemed to work. Wow. What about and you, Marie? How did you guys choose sled dogs? I never, I never really paid attention to that. It was... Mostly the guy thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you help your brother? I mean, everybody, you know, knows George Atwood. No, we all had our own families then. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So you would just race with the dogs that were available for the carnival sometimes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The well, people that had dogs used to lend us dogs. Uh, yeah. And then... Who actually was in charge of putting on the carnival? Was it a whole community planning event? or It was a whole community planning, yeah. And mm. he mentioned in, the, in, in Minto in the olden days, it was like five days or more. Was it the same as in Huslia too? It was weekend. It's just the weekend? Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well... And then you both said that they still hold the spring carnivals in the villages still. In Huslia, yeah, they still do, yeah. And dog racing is still a big part of it? Yeah. What about Minto, Andy? Yeah, it's, uh, that's the main event. Like I say, it's still, everything revolves around dog, dog racing. And old Minto, they used to, on first of the year, to get some people together, they start calling Mentor Dog Mush Association. 
the elect one person, the president of the dog race, and then they got committee members. I think four or five. They got five people planning the event. They work all winter, and what they're going to do March 17th, and how they're going to do it. Uh, men's race first or last, or uh, they had a planning committee that take care of stuff. Before that, before they started that dog mushers, everybody say, let's race, and they race. Yeah. <laughs> Now you mentioned they would have races at Thanksgiving, Christmas, or New Year's. Yeah, I think they used to have yeah Thanksgiving race, then Christmas they usually have women's race, then men's race on New Year's. And then spring carnival racing. Mm -hmm. Was that the same in in Huslia too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what other nearby villages did did folks from Huslia? Hughes. Hughes and Hughes and. Uh, Kaikuk. We used to go to either Hughes or Kaikuk for spring carnival. Uh, Did they plan it kind of near near each other's carnivals? Yeah. When we used to go to Kaikuk, uh, I remember one time they had uh, baseball in, on snowshoes. Oh my. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> so at the carnivals, do you also honor people? Um, uh, from the community? No, at not that I know of. Okay. No. Andy, no? Those are for just special potlatches and it memorial just, potlatches. It was just like what you call a uh, potluck, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't a real uh, potlatch like memorial. It was just a fun... People just sharing food. Yeah. All right. So there was, you mentioned, Andy, that there's an emphasis now on kids' activities at spring carnivals versus in the olden days. Um, are there, in when you guys were growing up, was there a lot of things for kids also, or was it more of endurance races? Oh, there was, no, not too much. What we... If we wanted to do anything like that race or whatever, we usually do it ourselves. And some of us get together and of course you get help from the family and so we have race every year, but it seemed like before they had the dog mushers committee, we just do our own thing, have our own race. Sometimes we even raise after school. Still, our parents will run the dogs and oh. <laughs> end up racing. <laughs> but uh, after the committee started, they planned the kids' race and everything. And uh, like you asked earlier about how to tell the good dogs, is there's a lot of different ways. Everybody had their own own theory on this one. Like if, uh, like if they're playing around and end up fighting, the winner is always the best dog or different things. There's a lot of ways that people say this is a good one and that's not good. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the future of dog racing? Because it seems that there, like you said, there aren't as many people racing dogs like there were before, like in the 40s and 50s. <clears throat> what do you think is the future of dog racing, Murray? Well, we race, when I first started, and before me, people used to come up from Minto and Nenana, Tanana race. We race to compete. This, and I don't think there was not enough money involved to race really for money. I mean, it's the competition to compete, I think, is what was important them days, is uh, competed with one another. And they, 
I used to get in like race from here to Livingwood and back. The biggest team was six dogs. You know, and that's, uh, I think they call it, round trip was 130 miles. So, and race with five dogs and amazing how you used to, they used to do that. It's, uh, and even when I started racing, I had 10 dogs and that was the biggest team in the whole field, 10 dogs. And uh, after that, it, I went to 11 and 12 and all up to 22, North American. So it's more, I think now, it's more business type thing. You raise dogs, raise them up, train them up, and you sell them. And back and forth, you buy and sell, and it seemed like it's pretty much business type thing now. Mm -hmm. Marie, as you look back on what took place in the early years and what's going on now with dog racing, what do you think is the future for it? In Huslia and Hughes and a lot of other villages, when my late brother George moved back to Huslia, he started a program that's uh, part of the school curriculum uh, for kids to be involved with dogs. And he used to have the kids help him uh, take care of his dogs, and he explained to them what, uh, how to take care of dogs and stuff like that. And so it's now in, I don't know how many schools in the state now. Uh, in the Toke area, in Kuskokwim area, it's all over now. It's part of the school curriculum to give the kids an identity and the culture, uh, to let them know where they come from. Uh, and as I understand it, the kids have improved a lot in the schools. Since then, they're more interested in school uh, as that being a program. And, and they get uh, dog feed for the dogs. And I see they even have hay for the dogs. We used to have to cut our own grass for our dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but, wonderful. Did, yeah. Um, I'm curious too, when you're talking about when you were racing and Andy, you just mentioned the number of dogs you had, how many dogs would you usually race with like for women versus men? Marie, how many dogs did you race with? Mm. It all depends on who lend you dogs. When we were, when we had our own dogs, I would race with like maybe five or six. And that but, was for a short distance or? Yeah, it's just like uh, five miles or something, maybe 10 miles, I don't know. Um, but one year, my late brother, uh, I mean, uh, cousin, Bergman Sam, he tell me, you're gonna race with my dogs. He hooked up 12 dogs for me. I think I drag almost all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of power on 12 dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the longest race you were in when you were dog mushing? The woman's race back home was not that, that long. Uh, I would say maybe, I don't know, five, six miles at the most. Okay. Uh, what about you, Andy? How many, what was the longest race you were in? Well, I, I raced in Tok and North American and Fur on the way. They're all about the, the same, 20 miles a day. Uh, Anchorage is 325. Toke used to be 
When I first went down with three twenties at sixty miles, and then two twenties in Fairbanks and a thirty mile the last day. You asked a question earlier about uh, what's the future of Dover's? In the village, it's just about died. Everybody used to have a team. Uh, the whole village, every everyone had six, seven dogs, five, six, seven dogs. And uh, sometimes they put two or three teams together and raced a North, North American. But uh, every household had a team, mostly for hauling wood and trapping, but they raced them. Now, in Minto, there's only two, two teams in Minto now. So it's, it's dying out down in the villages, but like in Fairbanks, there's Anchorage and different places, lower 48. There's still, I don't think dog mushes will ever go away. And they got the idea to rot and stuff. And uh, I don't think it's, just in the village, it's so hard to keep a team anymore. Mm -hmm. Was it hard when you, when you'd go dog racing in the big cities? Was it hard getting the dogs used to all that, you know, hustle and bustle versus you know where they were raised in the village? No, I the first time I raced like in, I went to Fur Rendezvous with village team with Minto. Everybody put in a couple of dogs and. I went down there, and I think I was more more scared than the dogs because they were all trained. They were, you know, they uh, they were all trained dogs, and usually, when you get dogs from every from people, they give you the best, which was we their leaders and behind the leaders, so they're all trained and when I went to Anchorage I was really afraid that them dogs will run off, follow a truck or you see vehicles going all around you there out on a trail and it didn't bother them. It was like I say, I was more worried than they were. <laughs> <laughs> well I know we spend a lot of time about dog racing which is um it's so interesting to hear your stories. And um, if we could talk a little bit more about spring carnivals. Marie, what kind of preparations? I mean, you talked about the whole community came together, but what kind of preparations um, did they do for the spring carnival? If we get uh, visitors with dog team, then the community uh, gathered uh, the dog food for them, took care of the uh, grass for them and stuff like that. Because uh, we're, we're happy to see somebody else, you know. Uh, in the old days, we used to just stay in camp. But when the school came, we started staying in the village. Uh, you know, we see each other every day. But in the old days, we used to just stay in camp and come to town for holidays or springtime when they come come to the village to sell their furs and get groceries and stuff like that. Uh, we didn't see each other that often, and then we're just happy to see each other, you know. Everybody is just in a good mood. Uh, ready to visit <laughs> so for someone that is listening to this and that is not familiar with interior alaska when you say spring camp what do you do you do in spring camp and when did that usually when did you start going out to spring camp we used to move to uh, spring camp uh, while there's still crust uh, we'd leave early in the morning while the crust is still hard 
uh, and we wouldn't go very far. Maybe we'd go five miles or something. Uh, and that, that, what they do there is they trap muskrat. Uh, they trap muskrat and then later on they hunt muskrat in canoes. And um, they get li like ducks and geese. And when the ice go out, and then we just, they sit fishing it for uh, mostly pikes. Mm. So but you would come back into the spring for the spring carnival if you were out at camp. You would come back in for the spring carnival? So that was a well, really festive well, time that people looked The people looked come to. to sell their furs and stuff anyway. Got to pay their bills in the store and then get groceries again. Um, when there was no school, that's what they did. Uh, they just come to town to sell their furs and get groceries. Then we go back out camp again. Uh, yeah. Was that similar in the Minto area, Andy? Yeah. If they're out out in spring camp or out trapping, everybody come in for the race for the uh, spring carnival. Like I said before, it was March 17th, and nobody out. Everybody's in the village. And... Uh, they, I, I'm not too sure how they got everything together in the early days. They, I don't know if they had a planning committee or what, how, how they did it when I was a kid. I know they had some pretty big race. All the, everybody from Ninana would come down, even from Tanana would come up and then we go to Tanana for, we all race in the United, of course, it's just 30 miles apart. There, so. They even had one race from Ninana to Minto and back. The next year they had from Minto to Ninana. That was a big, big thing. And uh, But the Spring Carnival, nobody stays out for that. Everybody come in. Mm -hmm. And in Huslia, was it around March 17th also, or was it a little later than that for your spring carnival, Marie? In the early days, it used to be March 17th. Uh, that was my parents' days, and at that time, we didn't even have the village of Huslia. We were in the old uh, village of Karaf, but the uh, place they used to go for March 17 at that time was a Dolby store. Uh, Emil Nadi's father had a store in, in Dolby and that's where they used to gather. Uh, that, that's what my parents told me. Uh, even people from Nulato used to go there. Uh, all there was was there all there was there is a store, so they must have all stayed in tents uh, because they surely couldn't all stay in the store. <laughs> mm -hmm. wow. But March 17 was the carnival in those days. Uh, is it still held at that time? No. Nobody even talk about March 17 anymore. Uh, they they have their race in Huslia and uh, is there going to be a spring carnival this year in Huslia? I think mostly they do their racing in January, December, January, and then uh, Hughes Hughes is like first week in April. Okay, and then there's Alakakat. And uh, I don't really know if they have 
the operation uh, whistle yet in April. No, okay. If it is, it's just kids raised probably. Uh, hmm. What about Minto, Andy? Do you know, are they having a carnival this year? I think so. Lloyd, Lloyd Charlie usually take care of that. And he raised money all winter long. And, uh, if they have a they have North American this year, they probably have it. Okay. Dog race. But with this virus going on, I don't think it'll be too many other events besides dog mushroom. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell, I don't know. I, uh, I know they're raising money right now. So I'm sure they're going to have something going on. Okay. Well, it's so interesting to hear your stories and the history about spring carnivals and dog racing in our region. Um, is there anything that I missed that you'd like to add? That you'd like to let folks know about spring carnivals or, or dog racing? Marie? Um, well, when we used to have dog races in uh, April in Huslia, uh, those were when everybody had dogs. And then dogs, teams from other villages would come to. Uh, when I was still living there in, in the 70s, we had, uh, it seems to me it would be like first week in April. Mm. Everybody know that's coming up, so everybody get ready, you know. Uh, they they even uh, say who's going to stay in with whose house and stuff like that. And Fun times, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Andy, what about you? Is there anything you'd like to add? No, it's... Uh Raising up uh, it was every kid's dream was to race in a big race, dog race. That's all they think about. They they like and it's kinda sad how it's kinda dying in the village, you know. It's uh of course, you got TV now and everything else, but uh, everybody wanted to race a long time ago, dog race. When I was a kid, everyone, and a lot of us did race in the, like North American. So, but now they don't even, it's a different lot different now they don't even think about dog race <laughs> well i want to thank you both for sharing the history like i said um, of years ago in our region and also sharing your experiences uh, we really appreciate it and just thank you for being here we also want to thank you all for tuning in listening to to this program and we also want to thank doyon limited for being a major sponsor that we can put together these cultural programs, <clears throat> not only to preserve the history and the stories uh, from our elders, um, but also just get a sense of what's taken place within our region. So thank you for uh, participating, and uh, we hope you appreciate this cultural programming put on by Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center, also Tanachis Conference, and Danakanaga. I'm Sharon McConnell. Thank you.